Okay, so we're burning hexane now. This is hexane. It reacts with oxygen, which is in the air. It produces carbon dioxide, and they're saying liquid water. It, it would appear as steam because fire is hot, but then if you trap that for long enough, it would condense and turn back into liquid water, and it releases a pretty substantial amount of heat. Hexane is a light oil that you could burn as, burn as fuel. And they say, if you get 0.537 moles of carbon dioxide, then how much heat did you make? If you burn enough of this stuff to make six, to make six moles of carbon dioxide, you get this much energy. What if you only burn 0.537 moles? Well, I haven't done a cross multiplication in a little bit. I'll do it that way, and then I'll do it with the formula. You could say, I'm taking these two numbers out of the reaction, the energy and the carbon dioxide, you could say if 6 moles of carbon dioxide goes with 4,163 kilojoules, then 0 0.537 moles of carbon dioxide goes with what? So these two numbers are out of the reaction. You can write this before you even look at the question. Well, as long as you know it's about carbon dioxide. On this side, you just have to make sure that your CO2s are lined up and that your kilojoules down here are lined up. You don't want a crisscross. You want these to be lined up with each other. And we solve this by cross multiplication, meaning we go 4163 times 0.537 divided by 6. 4163 times 0.537 divided by 6. And from that, I get 372.5885 kilojoules. So that's one way to get the energy released. I'll fix up the significant digits in a moment. If you want to do it with delta H's, and why not? For carbon dioxide, the delta H of this is if you get 4163 kilojoules for 6 moles of carbon dioxide, you do 4163 divided by 6, because we want kilojoules for just one mole, we get the delta H for this is 693.83 kilojoules for every mole of CO2. The reaction assumes you're using 6 moles, because that's what they got when they balanced this. The delta H is saying for every mole of CO2 this much. Once you have that number you can say energy equals N delta H. Number of moles is 0.537. Delta H, we just found it, 693.83. And 537 gives 372.58. It looks like I rounded a little differently. I got 671 this time, but I believe once we do the sig digs, that isn't going to matter anymore. How many sig digs do we get for this? That has four. This only has three. These coefficients are assumed to be perfect, like they have infinite significant digits. We don't have to worry about those. I believe this number with three significant digits is our worst, so that means our answers should only have three significant digits. This would round to 373 kilojoules, and this over here would also round to 373 kilojoules, so both ways worked fine. And they said how much heat is released, meaning there's no need really to put a negative on here. You could write released if you wanted just to be a little clearer. I probably would. But when they say it in the question like this, you're kind of off the hook as to stating which way the heat's flowing. The question is saying that's already understood. Now in B, same reaction, but now they're not talking about CO2 anymore. They're talking about hexane. And they say we have a whole 25 kilograms of hexane. That's like 50 pounds of hexane. Uh, we better get a number of moles for that. We're probably going to need it. 
mass divided by molar mass. The mass is 25,000 grams, because chemistry is mostly about grams. Molar mass, this is hexane, C6H14. So its molar mass is going to be 6 times 12.01 for the carbons, plus 14.14 .14 for the hydrogens, 86.2. is the molar mass of hexane. 25,000 divided by 86.2 almost two, exactly 290 moles. 290.0232 moles of hexane. How much heat? Well, energy equals N delta H equals, we just got our number of moles. And the delta H, we can't use this. This is per mole of carbon dioxide. We need a new one and we need it to be for hexane, which means we take 4163 and we divide it by, oh, by one. So for this one, the delta H really is 4163 because it's this much energy for every one mole of hexane. So our delta H is 4163 kilojoules divided by one mole of hexane. And from that we get 290.0232 times 4163. This is going to be big. Total energy is 1 two zero seven three six six point six kilojoules. We could divide that by a thousand and that would get us to twelve oh seven point four megajoules. We could even divide by a thousand again and get one point two oh seven four gigajoules. And because this value has only three significant digits we should take that down to 3, so 1.21 gigajoules is how I would answer that. Or, if you don't want to scale down the or scale up the units, you could stay with uh, 1.21 times 10 to the 3 megajoules. Or, if you stay back here at kilo, you could have 1.21 times 10 to the 6 kilojoules. So all three of those in the boxes have three significant digits. They're all reasonable metric units to use, whichever you like. OK, in the last part of this example, they have us work backwards a little bit. Instead of saying, here's how much chemical, figure out how much energy, they're saying, we need this much energy, how much chemical do we have to react? So, go in the other way. This is 100,000 kilojoules. I'm not going to work in scientific notation when I don't need to. And that's our total energy we need to produce. And for hexane, we know our delta H really is 4163. It's 4,162 kilojoules for one mole of hexane. So, our trusty formula can help with this. It tells us if our total energy is 100,000 kilojoules, and we don't know our number of moles, but we know our delta H is 4,163 kilojoules. We can do 100,000 divided by 4,163, and get that our number of moles is 24.0211386. That's probably way too many digits, but it's OK. Moles of hexane. And now they want the mass of hexane. Um, I did the molar mass on the previous page, but I've forgotten it. So let's do it again. Six times carbon would be 7206. 14 hydrogens is, hydrogen's always easy, 14.14. .14. And we get 
86.20 is our molar mass. So the mass of hexane we require will be number of moles times molar mass. Hope you have that memorized and internalized by now. Number of moles is 24.02, etc. 11386 times molar mass 86.20. And we get that our mass is 2,070.622147 grams. Now, how much of that do we actually keep? This number only has two significant digits, so we have to trim this way down. We can only keep two digits here, which means I can't even write, like, 2,100. I have to go to 2.0. 1 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3 grams. The 10 to the 3 is because I had to shift the decimal three times to get from where it was to da, 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 where it ended up right after the 2. So you can say 2.1 times 10 to the 3 grams, but you probably noticed a while ago that instead of that we could just say 2.1 kilograms. Same thing, it's still got the right number of significant digits, and any time you have more than a thousand grams, it's reasonable to go to kilograms.